What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Bremen, aka Allfires. Now surely a lot of you have started to see the multitude of negative headlines that are all being generated from yesterday's article that dropped in Variety. And if you haven't, this article was extremely lengthy, extremely scathing, and probably was dirty laundry that the top brass at Marvel would have preferred stayed behind the scenes instead of getting aired out in public. Now also to be fair, Variety has a history of over sensationalizing things and I still haven't forgiven them for the hit piece that they dropped in in the middle of the summer on Jonathan Majors, but that doesn't mean that the things in this article aren't true. And according to their sources, we have to talk about what's going on with Blade. We've been covering it here at the channel since last October's major blow up. Apparently the rumors of Mahershala Ali being willing to walk over the state of the project are just the tip of the iceberg. And we really didn't know the half. Literally, we didn't know the half. We reported on two and a half writers working on the film. Now, apparently, they're on their fifth writer. We're going to break down exactly what was in this article, what they said about previous iterations of the script, just how bad it got, and where they are now with that film. Marvel Studios hopefully getting this project back on track, but man, it's really hard to imagine how this got so bad. We're breaking it all down, the latest official updates to Blade, what's going on with the script, and what the movie, at least at one point, looked like, where Blade was the fourth lead in the film. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we do daily Marvel content at the channel, and that's all we do. Everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers, and reviews, to the occasional industry insider report and everything in between. So if that sort of thing's for you, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing PS5 giveaway. The next one is right around the corner. In fact, it's back-to-back -back giveaways next week with Loki's finale in the Marvels. All you gotta do, be a sub, leave a comment if you want, stick around to the end of the video, we get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Okay, so again, after Variety enumerates a ton of things during this article that are metaphorically on fire over at Marvel Studios, they go on to report this quote, as public criticism mounts, Kevin Feige is pulling the plug on scripts and projects that aren't working. Case in point, the Blade reboot. With Mahershala Ali signed on for the role, things looked promising for a 2023 release date, but the project has gone through at least five writers, two directors, and one shut down six weeks before production. One person familiar with the script permutations says that the story at one point morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. Blade was relegated to the fourth lead, a bizarre idea considering that the studio had two-time Oscar winner Ali on board. Now I'm sure I speak for a lot of us watching this video when I say what the actual fuck. Marvel Studios, what in the world were you thinking? Literally, Blade is one of the easiest characters to do. Check it out. Make it rated R, include a lot of blood, have Mahershala Ali going through vampires nonstop. It is so easy to do a Blade movie. And as if it wasn't, let's pretend for a minute that this is a complicated undertaking. It's not as though other Marvel movies had certain movies to look at for their characters. There was no Avengers movie, there was no Ant-Man, there was no Iron Man or Thor, Captain America. There literally are two insane Blade films. Go watch those and just make better versions. Blade is one of the easiest characters in the world to do and to think that Marvel Studios actually had a script and this isn't a joke that was about life lessons led by women instead of just Blade, the lead, going through vampires. Not prioritizing what we love about the character first almost makes me think that Marvel Studios is unsavable. But that's not true, because the same blood, the same people that was in the room that built the Infinity Saga, that built the Avengers brand into the powerhouse that it was in 2019, is still there. And as case in point, this article goes on to talk about what Kevin Feige is trying to do with these projects, pulling the plug on the script and projects that aren't working. So this is basically right in line with what they just did with Daredevil Born Again soft reboot. They shot about a third of the season and realized it wasn't any good and they're starting all over again. This is what the article said about the new writer and the budget for the upcoming film. Quote, amid reports that Ali was ready to exit over script issues, Feige went back to the drawing board and hired Michael Green, the Oscar-nominated writer of Logan, to start anew. So regardless of what we reported on here at the channel about Bo DiMeo and then Nick Pizzolatto picking up from there and sort of reworking the script, they are truly scratching it, starting with a brand new script. No, it won't be led by women or about life lessons. It'll be about Blade, and it's getting written by the guy who wrote Logan. Speculation around the town is that the studio is looking to make the film, now slated for 2025, 
on a budget of less than $100 million, a deviation from Marvel's big spending strategy. I don't hate any of that. I don't hate the budget. I don't hate the writer. First of all, Michael Green is a great writer. He nailed it with Logan. I have all the faith in the world for him to do this story justice. Honestly, a lot more faith in him than any of the other names that were floated out for the previous scripts. Also, it doesn't bother me at all that they're looking to spend less than $100 million or somewhere in that range. You can make a perfectly good rated R Blade film in the neighborhood of $100 to $150 million. You don't need over-the-top CGI if you do a good mix of CGI and prosthetic effects, if you keep the action sequences limited to the number of reshoots that you do and rewrites, there is no reason they shouldn't be able to make a solid Blade movie for $100 million with that writer and all they have to do now is not lose the plot. It doesn't need to be a two hour film, it doesn't need to be groundbreaking and talk about the multiverse and everything else that's going on, they just need to focus on what's intrinsic to that character and the only other caveat I would add to this is they've got to make it rated R. You, you know, you can have monsters getting killed left and right with no blood, it makes sense, but Blade is a vampire hunter, he's a vampire himself. There needs to be a lot of blood in that film. Again, see the original Blade films. And in order to do that, they're gonna have to gift it a rated R rating. There's been rumors for a while it might be rated R, and I think with the success of Deadpool and Wolverine around the corner, they're gonna see that a rated R film is probably a lot more in line with what we wanna see out of some of these characters, and we'll do better at the box office, even though there will be a younger group of people uh, that won't be able to see it. I hate to break this to them, but that younger group of people really isn't going to see Marvel movies right now anyway. But despite all of this, my final thought is actually a positive one. Look, we maybe have not gotten some of the best projects out of Marvel Studios because they weren't able to keep up the quality when they started shipping the quantity. I'll also admit that their choice of characters to highlight, especially in Phase 4, was interesting. It was interesting to say the least because they didn't at any point incorporate any of the A-list characters that have typically done well for Marvel publishing. All of that adds up to a place where we are right now with the fandom where even though this isn't the right use of the word, I should say is disenfranchised, even though again, that's not how what that word actually means. Disenchanted is the word that I would be looking for, but that doesn't mean that they can't turn things around. And as evidence of that turnaround, they're willing to spend the money and scrap projects like Daredevil Born Again, which was already said to have filmed a third of the season. They are just burning cash when they start over. A fifth writer for Blade means yet another person that they're going to have to pay. All the money that they've done on the scripts leading up till now, all of that is burned as well. My point is, is if they didn't care, they would have just finished Daredevil or we would have just gotten one of these bad scripts for Blade. They're doing their best to figure it out. My question mark is, why is it so hard to find writers that understand these characters? And I think what it's going to take is making sure that the people in the room who are making decisions that matter actually like and understand Marvel and the fandom. And unfortunately, as is the track record with Disney, we've seen it on the Star Wars side, we're seeing it now with Marvel. Some of the people, again, who have been promoted here in the last three or four years to take on the task of steering the ship just don't understand. They just apparently do not. Because if you can't figure out Blade, which is one of the easier characters, I struggle to see how you're gonna pick up some of the complex nuance in some of the X-Men storytelling. Just has me scratching my head. But you guys let me know all your thoughts down below. If you'd like to see a Blade movie uh, about life lessons led by the women in Blade's life, it sounds like a PBS special is what my girlfriend said. She's absolutely right. I am all ears on what you guys have to say. Quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. All right, quick reminder, we will be doing a watch party for Loki. Episode five tonight will go live about an hour before the episode was up. I know I missed last week. I was in the air. Tonight we'll, we'll be live again, so I'll see you at the channel for the watch party. In the meantime, next week we'll be giving away back-to-back -back PlayStation 5s. One for Loki's finale, one for the Marvel's release. If you want to be entered to win, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button because you need to be a subscriber, then leave a comment down below. Because it's truly random, the more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. 
All winners will be announced at the end of videos the same way we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you liked today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. My name's Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I'm Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes, wherever you listen to original music under the name All Fires. And while I sincerely appreciate you checking my music out, thanks for checking this channel out. Stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.